Hi and welcome to Manx Methodists at Service Together for Sunday the 17th of October. We're glad that you can join us in this way as we virtually gather to worship God, the creator of the universe, the one in whom and through whom we have our being, the one who promises to always be with us in every time and every place. So let us pause and remind ourselves that we are in the presence of God, whether we are alone or with others, at home or in any other setting, he is with you. Let us pray. Lord, open our eyes to your presence. Grant us a vision to see what we can achieve as your love touches us, may we reach out to others. Lord, stretch our capabilities, extend our vision, and increase our sense of purpose, that we may grow in our service of you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, are one God, now and for ever. Amen. Sure. 
Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go, unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. Oh, my 
That hymn is colloquially known as Wrestling Jacob. We've sung the first six verses of it and we'll be singing the second six after this short reflection. But those first six verses really focus in on the wrestle and the struggle that Jacob had with God at that place he then named Peniel. Names are really important. Quite often in scripture we find a great significance attached to the meaning behind the name of a place or indeed the name of a person. Jacob's name, Jacob himself, his name means supplanter, cheater, manipulator. We know from Jacob's background that he certainly was all of these things. We can remember perhaps how he stole his brother's inheritance, how he cheated Isaac, his elderly father, into giving him the blessing that should have gone to his brother. And so Jacob flees from Esau and goes to live with his uncle Laban. Twenty-one years later, or thereabouts, we find that Jacob hasn't really changed that much. He decides it's time to go back and to make amends with his brother, but he's scared. He's scared that his older brother is going to kill him. So how does he approach? How does he approach Esau? Carefully and cleverly. He sends servants and animals gifts ahead of him to try and win Esau's favour. And then in this reading, we hear of how he sends his wives and his children across. Jacob sends his wives and his children into his brother's land before daring to cross over himself. And then he lays down for the night on what is the safe side of the river. Perhaps this is the same old Jacob putting himself first rather than thinking of those around him. But then he has this encounter. And as a result of this encounter, he's given a new name. As a result of this encounter, this wrestling with God, God touches him in such a way that he is changed and God gives him a new name, the name Israel. Israel, which means let God rule. You know, any time in scripture when a name changes, that indicates that indeed there is some significance to what's going on here. In the Old Testament, staying with the Old Testament for a moment, we have Abram. Abram becomes Abraham. And that ha, that breath sound, comes from the name of God, Yahweh indicating that he is now a man whose very life is centred around God, and he indeed is blessed by God. In the New Testament, we could think perhaps of Simon. Simon, who is given the new name by Jesus. He's given the name Peter, Petros, the rock, on which Jesus will build his church. In the Acts of the Apostles, we find Saul, Saul, a name which means kingly one. 
becomes Paul, a name which means little one. I love that, that this kingly one among men, this Pharisee of Pharisees, becomes a little one in service of the Lord. And here, Jacob undergoes a change, a change of name, which indicates a deep change of character. He goes from being Jacob to Israel. He goes from being cheater and manipulator to being one who lets God rule. Now, what does all this have to do with you and I so many years later? Well, I'm convinced that it is part of the natural, normal Christian journey that we, each one of us, will have times where we wrestle with God. Those times where we're trying to go to sleep, where we're tossing and turning, rolling this way and that, it feels, you know, the struggles with our thoughts, with our consciences, struggles with God. You see, God could, if he wanted to, very easily just pin us down and stop the struggle. He could slam us to the floor like the best wrestler and pin us down and that would be that. But that's not the way that God wrestles. God wrestles in such a way that we slowly surrender our lives to him. You know, Jacob goes from being somebody who puts himself first to being one who lets God rule. And sometimes that can be the biggest wrestling match of our lives. Who am I going to be? Am I going to be Jacob or am I going to be Israel? Who's going to rule my life, me or God? And that's something that we sometimes wrestle with, particularly in times of a great emotional turmoil and pain. You see, I think it's one of the biggest fallacies in the church today, this notion that we must be all right all the time. There's a big campaign in wider society around us that it's okay not to be okay. But what do we see when we come to church? We see the mask go on. I'm fine. Everything's fine. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. When really deep down, so many of us are wrestling, are struggling. Even Jesus wrestled with the will of his father. He was there in the Garden of Gethsemane, sweating blood, praying, take this cup away from me, wrestling, pressed down, weighed down, burdened by what he was to do. And then deciding to let God rule in saying, yet not my will, but yours be done. When we're wrestling with God, it's part of our natural Christian journey. We shouldn't ever feel guilty about wrestling with God or feel that we have to somehow put on our mask and put a brave face. Because if we do that, we're not being true to ourselves. We're not being people of integrity. You see, what did Jesus promise James and John? He promised them that they would drink the cup that he was to drink. Elsewhere in the Gospels, we have him telling his followers that they need to deny themselves, take up their own cross and follow him. The Christian life has never been promised to be easy. But God promises to be there with us, standing beside us, carrying us when needed. But sometimes we find ourselves wrestling with him, and that's okay. You know, the Christian author Adrian Plass, in one of his books, tells of a time he says he can't remember 
the circumstance and what led to this event, but he remembers a time with his son, when his son was a very young boy, and his son was kneeling on his lap, and was pounding Adrian's chest, his dad's chest, with his fists, screaming, I hate you, Daddy, I hate you, Daddy, I hate you, Daddy. And then Adrian says, having got out all of those negative and bitter emotions, his son fell asleep in his arms. I've used that story on occasion in pastoral situations, where somebody is really wrestling, really struggling, whether it's because they've been recently bereaved, or whatever the circumstance in their lives, they, they're wrestling with God. They don't understand. They're in pain. It hurts. And in using that story of Adrian Plass and his son, I've sometimes encouraged people. Say, look, get it out. Express that wrestling. God's big enough to take it. God's big enough to take all of our emotions, all of our anger, all of our pain. We can wrestle with him. And then rest in his arms. Knowing that in it all, through it all, despite it all, we are safe and we are loved by our Heavenly Father. Jacob wrestled with God and came to the place where his name was changed to Israel as he let God rule. We too sometimes wrestle. It's sometimes uncomfortable. But when it brings us to a place where we surrender and let God rule in our lives, we find at the end that beautiful, beautiful revelation that this one with whom we've been wrestling, his very nature and his name, is love. Amen.
living and loving God, as we turn to you in our prayers, we lay before you those things in our lives that we are wrestling with this day. We thank you and we praise you that when our words run out, your Holy Spirit searches the heart and intercedes for us. And so we express before you those cries of our heart for this world which you have made. For the situations that trouble us within it. For your church in its often stumbling witness to your love. For our friends and family, those whom we hold dear, and for ourselves. We pray that you will listen, not necessarily to our words, but to our prayer the cry of our hearts. As each concern comes to mind, we lift them to you. Place them into your hands. And we ask that for all people, in all places, they may know that revelation of your love. This we ask through Christ Jesus, our Saviour and our Lord. Amen. May the Lord reveal to you the glory of his love. Open your eyes to behold that he is ever with you, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, remain with you now and forever. Amen.